So I just wanted to thank everyone for coming. Um, and also, I'd like to welcome Kate Roberts to Google. Kate is the founder and director of Youth AIDS and Five and Alive, two marketing programs implemented by the Population Services International, where she is a vice president of corporate marketing and communications. Founded in 2001, Youth AIDS is a global education and prevention initiative that uses media, pop culture, music, theater, and sport to stop the spread of HIV AIDS and reach 600 million young people in more than 60 countries with life-saving uh, messages, products, services, and care. In 2002, Youth AIDS partnered with MTV to produce the Staying Alive concert, a $3 million production broadcast worldwide and featured on all major news channels, including CNN. Other noted productions include an innovative, celebrity-driven, cause-related marketing campaign, Hear No Evil, See No Evil, Speak No Evil, through a partnership with Aldo Shoes, and four award-winning documentaries aired on VH1, the Discovery Channel, and National Geographic, aimed at raising awareness about the global HIV-AIDS crisis as they follow Youth AIDS Global Ambassador, Ashley Judd through the most affected areas of Africa, Central America, and India. Roberts has been featured in the Washington Post, named Power Player of the Week by Fox News, and celebrated on CNN Heroes. Kate has also been given the honor of speaking at the Aspen Ideas Festival, and has recently been awarded Youth Young Global Leaders of the World 2007 by the World Economic Forum. Most recently, Roberts has launched Five and Alive, an exciting new marketing initiative aimed at raising funds and awareness for PSI's child survival programs, and has co-founded the Global India Fund. Originally from England, Kate holds a degree in hotel and catering management from Southport University of Art and Technology. Um, and lastly, we'll be filming this for YouTube, so during the Q&A, please make sure to use one of the microphones. Thanks so much, Kate, for coming. Thank you. I realize I'm competing with Oktoberfest, so I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, so yeah, I'm Kate Roberts, and I founded Youth Aids about 10 years ago, and what I've decided to do today is try to tell you the story of building this brand. I don't know if you are marketeers, and, and that's what you want to hear, but um, I figured by telling my story, um, it might really highlight in a, in a different way how we actually do development differently. In fact, uh, I was telling Laura over lunch that I'm reading a book right now um, called Fred, and it's all about um, a guy who's a postman, and it's all about his passion that he's turned his life around, even though he's a postman, but he found a passion in his life that made an ordinary life very, very exciting, and I think that I can say that about myself. I have a very, very ordinary life, or at least had a very ordinary life, and now my life is very, very interesting and exciting. So I'm here to tell that story. Um, I'm technically challenged, so I really apologize for anything that goes wrong with this presentation. Um, well, first of all, my journey um, to do this work started with a bed. Um, and I'm going to get into why that was, but first of all, to give you a little bit of background uh, on what I used to do, I was in advertising for many, many years, uh, working for Saatchi and Saatchi, an advertising agency in Eastern Europe. I lived pretty much all over the world. Um, I grew up on a ship. My father's a sea captain. So I spent my early years traveling around the world, ex exploring different cultures and religions and seeing a lot of poverty along the way, but decided to go into for-profit work, working in advertising, which took me to Eastern Europe. I went to live in Russia, uh, headed up the Eastern European operations, and had a number of big adventures, um, had a run-in with the Russian mafia, and um, both being kidnapped um, several times and uh, having adventures in Russia led me to have to escape the country. So I fled from Russia, um, this is about 13 years ago, and um, found my way to Romania to again work 
for Saatchi and Saatchi. And my focus was cigarettes and alcohol and bubble gum and all things that kids really liked. And it was my job to come up with strategies of how to get them to smoke more cigarettes and eat more bubble gum and drink more soda pop and whiskey and all the things that were destroying their health. And I have to tell you that I didn't really have a problem with that. And uh, I was kind of good at it. And I, I had the, the first class ticket lifestyle where I was able to travel all over the world and buy nice clothes and buy nice shoes. And I had a shoe passion, very expensive one. And I was going along my merry way in Romania. Actually, I don't know whether you know much about Romania, but it's a very small country. It used to be communist. And um, I, what struck me about the country was it was a very passionate country, but there was very little resources for youth. There was no real parties or um, action or, or color or fashion. Um, and what I decided to do in Romania was to tap into my world of pop culture and bring that to my for-profit clients who um, were paying me a lot of money to do their marketing. So along my way of doing these uh, outrageous promotions, um, I was approached by a very innovative and, imp and impressive man Michael Holscher, who was representing an organization called PSI, Population Services International, for Romania. And he'd read about me in the media of doing these rave parties and cigarette campaigns and working for Coca-Cola and various different brands. And he simply asked me if I would lend my time to helping him develop the first AIDS campaign in Romania. And immediately, I thought to myself, hmm, well, this might be interesting. Maybe this will lead to some award of some sorts. And uh, certainly didn't think at the time how this could serve the population of Romania well. And we went on, I agreed, and the issue was that PSI Romania didn't have a lot of funds to develop the campaign. So I looked into what I was doing with my for-profit clients and thought I could go to, that, to those different companies to get the resources necessary to launch this campaign. So we came across an idea called In Bed With You. And we had this big red shiny bed that would travel around to different places to um, really get the issue of HIV out there. And we would invite various rock stars and musicians and actors and actresses to get into bed with young people to talk about their first sexual experience um, and all the issues that face young people um, around reproductive health and their first sexual encounters and safe sex. So we developed this campaign in bed with you and we were really able to harness the resources that were in Romania. We actually had the launch party in a brothel, and um, which, which of course was very risky in those times, um, but we were able to bring in all the big TV stations, all the different media outlets, um, and we, learned, we launched one of the first uh, condoms in Romania, and within a year we had managed to um, increase condom use by 100%. Um, so I got the bug and we were really looking at different innovative ways of delivering this message and getting these condoms into the hands of people who needed them the most. And of course it was exhausting. I became quite obsessed with the campaign and decided that I needed to really think about my direction of what I was doing with my life. So I went off to Africa and really just to rest. Immediately on landing in South Africa, I went to a township to really, I was interested in the, in the country and the culture. And I noticed that on really every corner there was a, a funeral or a graveyard. And I just felt something was amiss. And on asking the local people, 
Um, they told me it was AIDS, it was HIV, and the stigma that surrounded it was so powerful that people weren't even admitting that their family members had died of AIDS. And at that moment, it struck me, well, why can't we do here in Africa what we are doing in Romania in such an innovative way of tapping into the private sector and using the built-in resources and infrastructure in that country to deliver these much needed messages about stigma and discrimination and condom use um, in a much more effective way. And not only do that, but to bring these extra resources to the issue, to bring Hollywood, to bring corporations, to get corporate money and to really expand on what is already happening in that country. So back in Romania, um, I returned very quickly, very excited, very, very excited that I had sort of got this vision of what I wanted to do. And I was actually very excited with the thought that I might be able to leave the private sector and do something worthwhile with my life. So on arriving back to Romania, we, um, a couple of things that we did were, and these are the love police. The love police go down to the Black Sea coast and arrest people on the beach who are not carrying condoms. And with their ticket, they get a condom. So we have these love police all over Romania um, arresting people. Again, a different innovative way of delivering this message. So, um, PSI. So obviously, I found out then from my, my friend and mentor, Michael Holscher, that PSI was not just in Romania, that PSI was all over the world, actually in 40 countries. And he told me that PSI was a very successful global health organization that predominantly focused on getting uh, government funding. And perhaps PSI would be open to hearing about this idea of bringing extra resources. Now, PSI all started with this, this one condom and a couple of trucks. And the trucks that you see here were actually in Bangladesh. And 40 years ago when PSI started, this is how uh, these condoms were dis distributed. If you think about it 40 years ago, even to us, condoms were scarce. It was a taboo subject. So take a country like Bangladesh where the stigma and the, the cultural situation in the country was even worse. Um, one of our founders felt that this is what needed to happen, that we needed to bring vital health care, health services, health products to people who really need them the most. So this was all started in Bangladesh from the back of a truck. So PSI's mission, as I said, is really to save lives. Um, I like to joke that PSI is one of the most effective and largest health organizations in the world that nobody has ever heard of. Um, you, you hear about care, you hear about Save the Children, you hear about UNICEF. Uh, size relation, we're actually very similar. And our focus, and the focus there in Romania 13 years ago, or 12 years ago when I was there, was to improve the life, people's, people's lives and health all over the world, and really to have grassroots, measurable results in all of the countries. So when I joined uh, PSI 10 years ago to start Youth Aids, we had 40 country programs. And now we're in 65 countries around the world, reaching almost a billion people with these life-saving health products and services. I would like to say that I can uh, take credit for that, but I really can't. It's a group of extraordinary people, about 8,000 people worldwide, um, who every day make it their mission to develop these winning creative solutions to deliver this much needed healthcare um, services and products to these people. And some of these people you can see here um, in these images. We go into deepest, darkest Africa, to Asia, to all these different places in the world that are very hard to reach. And you must imagine, for instance, that um, a sixth of the world does not have access to drinking water. Now, I was privy to the most amazing lunch ever today in Google, um, which I cannot believe you get every day and every night. Um, all those free drinks and free food, but um, 
this is a very different situation around the world, obviously, and we need to find ways to reach people in very rural and urban areas with these, with these life-saving messages and behavior change techniques to have them realize why themselves and their families are getting sick from purely preventable diseases. And some of these diseases are uh, malaria, um, HIV, tuberculosis, pneumonia, um, reproductive health, women uh, giving birth to children under trees or having unsafe abortions um, really do account for hundreds of millions of lives every year. Um, so these are some of the countries that we're in. We really do span across the whole world. We're in 65 countries uh, across five continents. Most of these countries I've actually been to now, which was actually one of my real objectives, is to go and learn about the situation all over the world, about how people are living and, um, and how they are um, finding access to these, this health care. Now, just to explain my internal challenge a little bit, because when I came to PSI with this, with this very fancy idea of reaching out to Hollywood and the corporate world, PSI was, was a, and still is, a decentralized organization. So you have to imagine that there's many companies all over the world with CEOs heading up those local programs. And uh, they, they really need a local identity because they work locally with the government, they have local resources, they fill a very critical gap between what the government is doing and what the private sector is doing. So a highly effective organization already, um, but had never told the story of themselves. Again, one of the most highly successful health organizations in the world, but nobody knows. So my job was to come in and first of all convince PSI that this is something that I should be doing. And again, um, PSI had, had very, oops, PSI had very little brand identity and no equity in the PSI brand. And quite frankly, the programs themselves weren't really interested in this youth aids idea. So it was very much a case of having to prove myself and having to prove this idea of youth aids. So my mission was to take this idea that I had drummed up in the slums of South Africa and try to build it into a global brand. And I found myself in an office in Washington, really not knowing anybody or really having any connections. So my first job was to reach out to some of the champions that I have known over my career to try to make this work. And my first call was to MTV, who I had worked with in Eastern Europe. So I'd say that I am on a mission to find champions. And my mission was to find these champions to gain corporate support, to build vital partnerships, to bring the media to put a public face to what PSI is doing, and to recruit celebrity ambassadors, which was a whole journey all on its own. So what I want to do now is, rather than me talk, I always feel that it's much better to show videos. 15 to 24. I love, I love hip hop. Beck. Cody Chestnut. People have sex. I have sex. You guys have sex. Justin Timberlake. Get tested to know your HIV status. Alicia Keys. There's no cure, but there's a way for you to help. Wyclef Jean. This is Wyclef Jean. You have AIDS is about kids coming together for kids, people. HIV prevention initiative working in 70 countries to educate young people about HIV and AIDS. Through partnership with leading global brands already popular with youth, as well as their favorite celebrities, Youth AIDS is spreading the word. Youth AIDS partnered with Sanrio and Macy Gray to promote a t-shirt featuring Hello Kitty. Hey, this is Macy Gray and I am angry because AIDS takes the life of one child every minute. 100% of the proceeds benefited youth AIDS programs. Ashley Judd. Five million further infections every single year. Then 
Kristen Davis also joined the campaign, which sold thousands of t-shirts for youth aids. Missy Elliott partnered with Levi's and youth aids to create a one-of-a-kind jean jacket that was sold on World AIDS Day 2002. Magic Johnson promoted a Skechers duffel bag branded with Youth AIDS. The Magic Johnson Foundation Youth AIDS and Skechers to help save lives. I take risks every day, but this is one risk I won't take. It is proven that messages delivered by leading artists resonate effectively with kids ages 15 to 24. I love, I love hip hop. Beck. Cody Chestnut. People have sex. I have sex. You guys have sex. Justin Timberlake. Get tested to know your HIV status. Alicia Keys. There's no cure, but there's a way for you to help. Wyclef Jean. This is Wyclef Jean. Youth AIDS is about kids coming together for kids, people coming together for people to protect and educate all of our kids against HIV. Timbaland's announcement that he plans to produce an update on the 1985 classic, We Are the World. Timbaland. I'm going to do the same thing that Quincy did back at 20 years ago, two decades ago. Quincy Jones. 6,000 6, kids become infected every day. Dave Matthews. Nothing quite as good as an orgasm, that's for sure, that's for sure. But you know, nothing quite as bad as dying prematurely either. So protect yourself. And Michelle Branch have endorsed Youth Aids and our corporate sponsors. These unprecedented celebrity and corporate partnerships enable Youth Aids to deliver a clear message that is making an impact around the world. Tell your children one thing. Trust me, you should use your condom. Okay, so this is sorry, I'm gonna have to flick back to the presentation here. So, what you see there is after a couple of years of, and I have to say, San Francisco means something for, for me because I remember in the very, very early years of not having a lot of resources to do this. I actually took the Greyhound bus from San Francisco to LA because uh, we just literally did not have any money to uh, to get me to, to fly me around chasing these partnerships. Um, sorry. Um, so that was where we were in the beginning, and the oh. Does anybody know how to get this back? I'm so sorry. Um, so, okay, so again, to get back to where we were, the first real project that launched us into orbit with our brand was this unprecedented partnership between MTV Networks International, the Gates Foundation, Paul Allen, and Levi's. And what it was was a global um, partnership and concert series that was made into a 90-minute documentary and aired in 170 countries around the world. And Youth Aids and PSI were the driving force behind the messaging. We engaged the talent behind it. We worked with the talent to develop various PSAs. And we aired it in all the countries that MTV were not in. And I would say that this was the platform, really, that helped us to launch Youth Aids and to get others involved. You know, one of the challenges, I think, of the developing world is there are so many worthy causes, and you really have to find a way to get your cause out there and cut through the clutter of everything that's going on. Back then, 10 years ago, was a very different landscape than what it is right now with everything that we have going on online. And the power then was really through multimedia, television, radio, and on the ground. And this was the most remarkable experience of shipping P. Diddy and Alicia Keys and Usher and various stars to South Africa where I had originally had the idea of Youth Aid. So one very touching moment was taking Alicia to a clinic 
where all the women in the clinic were just about to give birth and they were all HIV positive. There was 25 beautiful African ladies and they had heard that Alicia was coming to speak to them about this issue. And they'd heard about two weeks before. And when we walked in, they were lined up, the most beautiful women, and they burst into her song, Fallen. It was when she had just, um, she was just becoming famous for that song. And they had been rehearsing it over the two weeks so that they could give her a, a welcome. But for me, that was a very touching moment because it is in the, in the um, townships of South Africa was where it had all started. Um, so, cause marketing back then was relatively new. And I think the power of the MTV St Staying Alive project really helped us to bring in these various companies. Uh, to give you an example of one of them, Kiehl's, um, which is a brand which I'm sure we all use and know. Uh, Kiehl's have never spent a dollar on doing any form of advertising. And they had a product that was on their shelves that was not selling. And we approached them to do a product for youth aids. And they decided to use what, this product that wasn't doing well. And they rebranded it, put the youth aids logo on it. And it literally flew off the shelves. And in two weeks, they had cleared their entire stock. So on forming these partnerships, it's about finding win-win solutions and finding win-win strategies that are really going to help to sustain these programs. And I was on a personal journey of finding a company, one company, that would really embrace this issue and put all their resources behind it and make it part of their brand, make it part of their network. So whereas these projects had been great learning experience, you know, they'd raised a couple of million dollars. I really wanted to find one brand that could do that. Um, and this was the company. The, the background behind Aldo Shoes is that they had been giving silently to AIDS causes since the beginning of the pandemic. And their general manager was sitting on a plane one day, and he opened Us Weekly, one of the tabloids. And in the tabloid, he found a picture of Kristen Davis from Sex and the City wearing the Hello Kitty Youth AIDS t-shirt. And he thought to himself, maybe it's time for us to be more visible with the work that we're doing around HIV. So he decided to put a call into us uh, when, he, when he arrived back in Canada and asked me to come and meet him and their founder, Mr. Aldo Bensadoun. And we really just talked about their objectives of what they wanted to do. And ultimately, as in any for-profit company, they wanted to sell more shoes. And they were very forthright about that, but they also wanted to show their customers how much they care about them and about the potential risks of HIV. So this was the program that was born out of that conversation. And then about a year later, we went live with See No Evil, Hear No Evil, Speak No Evil, which literally um, you could see on billboards, on buses, um, in, in advertisements, in magazines. And what we did with them is we leveraged their marketing spend. They obviously had marketing power with the dollars that they would buy pages in magazines or billboards. And we managed together to double that marketing space that they were buying to um, support this campaign. This campaign ran in about 25 countries. To be honest, it's still running in 25 countries. And it created about 1.5 billion media editorial impressions. Um, and that was outside of their advertising. That was the number of people who wrote about it or if it was online. And it raised, uh, it's raised about $4 million now that goes towards our programs. So for me, this was the turning point of the Youth AIDS brand, of really finding this corporate partner um, to do this. And there are many stories um, surrounding how we got about 40 A-list celebrities to be part of this campaign.
young people who aren't educated or have forgotten the education that is shown. Obviously, it's not a uh, black issue or, or gay issue, it's a world issue. Young people are preparing for these parties for Donald. They make up a large percentage of the employees of the organization. They're a large percentage of our customers. We thought that we had a moral obligation to speak out to them. We decided to get together with you guys and I created a very compelling message. Hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. It's about changing the course of history. It's about changing the world. It's about social justice. It's about empowering people to be productive, healthy, and safe in their lives. When we first decided that this was going to be a celebrity-driven campaign, it was very recently, and I really didn't think that we were going to be able to pull it off. But everybody we asked jumped on board, and it's just been absolutely amazing. I like this campaign for so many reasons. I mean, first of all, Peter Lindbergh shooting it, and he's I, someone that I've known for years, and he's a great photographer. When the approach was Mr. Laird, I thought the campaign was really great, because to use people who we know and agree to put a tape on their eyes, I mean, that was an amazing chance. Cindy Crawford was an eye on the tape, it's still Cindy Crawford. Now, I actually have a lot more presentation to do, but I am very conscious of the time, and I do like some form of interaction, and would love any questions that you might have up until this point. Yes. Again, I think it's about a win-win strategy, and we, because we're being protective over our brand, you know, we have a brand too, just as Aldo Shoes does, and so it's almost like a licensing deal. You have to negotiate up front what your boundaries are and, and how much you want to raise. Um, and so, again, you have to have a win-win. Um, is that me that's making that noise? You have to have a win-win. So you go in and you have to have an honest, trusting relationship from the beginning that you're not going to get exploited. And I think that the public has become more savvy now. They've become more savvy and they can see through campaigns. So it has to be credible and it has to be, I'm backing away from the microphone. It has to be credible and it has to be a meaty campaign for the consumers to even want to buy into it now. That's a really great question, though. Yeah, it's a really great question. Um, any other questions up until now? Yes. That's a really great question. I have to tell you that I don't do anything differently now than I used to do in the for-profit world. And 
Um, everything I learned doing marketing for Saatchi and Saatchi, I apply to this. Um, I think that my experience building brands before has helped me to build this brand. And I think the, the thing that's helped me the most to build this brand is two things. One, having a very credible and successful health organization behind the brand of PSI. I don't think this would have been possible without having that organization behind the brand because all the money that's raised goes to PSI's programs to help them with sustainability and to build more resources. Uh, and secondly, it's passion. It's just pure passion. I really, really believe in, in the organization and what we're doing. And I, you know, when you travel to the countries and you see for yourself what's going on, you can't help but have that passion for what you're doing. And so I, I think that's universal. You really need to find the passion in your life and apply it to what you're doing. We were just talking over lunch about people who go into work and just do a job to earn money. I can't possibly imagine being that person or not having something greater than myself to work towards. But for-profit techniques work for non-profits and I actually think that there are not enough for-profit people in the, the non-profit in the non-profit world. Uh, I think I just lost the presentation. Um, in the nonprofit world doing, doing the work that, that needs to be done and, and finding these innovative ways to, again, cut through the clutter and present your brand to form these partnerships. Any other questions before we go back? Oh. Okay. Um, all right, to quickly go through again. So another question might be, well, how do you sustain, how do you sustain these programs? You know, how do you become the core of a company's brand and how do you keep these going? How do you keep it interesting? And, and also, how do you bring different corporations into the mix? And this is just another example of an organization, H&M, we all know it, they've got 13, hundred stores worldwide. They uh, believed in the cause themselves, and this is actually recently run, where they just use their platform internally to develop very, a range of clothing that we managed to get Rihanna to be the face of. And it raised millions of dollars, and we're just about to launch a, a health center in, in Haiti and Russia with the proceeds. Um, Again, I referred before about it's about finding champions. There's a number of champions sitting here with me today, but these are some of the champions that I've seen around the world who have really helped to save lives. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was the first man of the church to come forward and talk about the importance of correct and consistent condom use, a, a, a big risk. Um, the church is a powerful medium, and he was the champion. Um, a lady here in the slums of India in the purple sari was given a death sentence by her doctor when she found out that she was HIV positive. Her doctor literally told her that she would die uh, very soon. And, and she decided to become a peer educator. I think we've lost sound. She decided to become a peer educator. And before her, she died, she actually saved hundreds of thousands of lives by speaking out in a difficult community with so much um, prejudice against people living with HIV. And she was able to use her power. So she's a champion. Um, the Global Fund, the Gates Organization, uh, the government, they're all champions. And this is a picture of Michael Holscher, who originally approached me to do this. And so for me, he's a champion. And um, I think that that's really my point, that everybody has it in them, and everybody can be a champion. Uh, these are some of our celebrity ambassadors. Uh, we try to find culturally relevant ways to work with different people from different backgrounds to get different messages out. 
And these are just some of the people, Miss Universe, uh, Bono, Ashley Judd, Juanes, um, and this gentleman um, who is our ambassador, uh, his name is Akshay Kumar in India, because people are gonna relate to people in their own countries. Uh, we also, in India, worked with Shahrukh Khan, Shushmita Sen, and that's really what we do all over the world by, by social mobilization and tapping into the cultures. Um, we've made a number of films. Um, we, we've made five documentaries now that have aired all over the world. I would encourage you to look and watch these films. Uh, the National Geographic one was uh, following uh, Ashley and various Bollywood stars around India. I'm not going to do the video thing again. I can't stand it. <laughs> um, so you might ask yourself how effective Youth AIDS is. Well, we've raised um, almost $20 million in cash and um, probably hundreds of millions of dollars worth of resources. The MTV project alone uh, was $90 million worth of media. And for me, it's all about partnership because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to tap into the built-in infrastructure that exists in the world and um, we're really looking to form those effective partnerships. Okay, so in ending, I'm going to show you one last video. Good morning, I am Ashley Judd and I am the Global Ambassador for Youth AIDS. My first trip as Youth AIDS Global Ambassador was designed around the International AIDS Conference, which at that time was being held in Bangkok, Thailand. Here we are. I don't know that much about Cambodia. I left my Lonely Planet tour book at home. But in a way, I'm glad because I think it's really interesting to come to a place like this, eyes wide open, just ready to learn. Um, I will let them show me what they are about rather than come in with any preconceived notions whatsoever. And so the journey begins. We started by visiting a wonderful, wonderful hospital slash hospice that provides end-of-life care for the people who have really been ravished by opportunistic infections and that are really um, at the very end of their you know, losing battles with HIV AIDS. We arrived at a pagoda, which is what they call their temples, and uh, went inside, and then the monks entered. It is an enormous pleasure to sit and have people pray for you. It's so totally rocked. So when that was all done, and we adjourned outside, I met the Watt Grannies. <laughs> A Wat Granny is a Buddhist woman who takes on the assignment of caring for at-risk and vulnerable children. It was about the most beautiful collection of women I've ever seen in my life. They were awesome. Tell them I'll come back and bring my handsome husband. I held some beautiful babies. Oh man, beautiful babies. The hardest things were at night in my hotel room by myself, thinking about the people I met and thinking about this beautiful child named Okshoi Lea and just knowing that they are still in their circumstances, you know, vulnerable and at risk is, is very difficult. What I was a part of this afternoon was peer education, so a sex worker, um, who is dynamic and has an outgoing personality will be asked to help educate her peers about HIV, how the virus is transmitted, and about condoms, both male condoms and female condoms, and how to insist that your clients use a condom, and how to safely get out of the situation if the client refuses. Thailand was um, perfect because it's the exact opposite. We are new in Thailand. 
We are just getting started and one of the interesting things that we were able to do was be involved with the government at the very highest level right away. And the Prime Minister was gracious enough during his very busy schedule to give us not only an audience but a very ample one. We went to an orphanage and it's very hardcore. I mean I've I've cried more than once over being in that place. It's just not right. It is not right to have to talk to children so young about such adult issues, but I can't help the fact that they're there. And there are a lot of programs and a lot of government activities directed at preventing those children from being on the street in the first place. However, some are already there. So we have to reach out to the ones who are there, identify them, and help them on a consistent and sustained basis so that they do not become HIV positive. That's what this is about. And seeing storefront after storefront after storefront after storefront of these bars and karaoke establishments. I mean, how can I describe what it's like to go to a brothel? Nothing prepares you. Absolutely nothing prepares you. The women in the brothels and the bars and the karaoke establishments knew a lot about HIV AIDS and I would say that um, a lot of that was a credit to PSI Youth AIDS programs. The first group of sex workers with whom I visited were all HIV positive and they were still working in commercial sex. It's been the journey of a lifetime and a trip I've been waiting my entire life to take. There's absolutely hope because PSI Youth AIDS programs work. They absolutely 100% work. Being associated with HIV AIDS associates you with compassion, with hope, and what company doesn't want to be associated with that? And the more creative people are, the more broad a population the messages can reach. So that really shows the work that we do on the ground and um, We've taken our champions and our ambassadors many different times to, to see these programs now. And uh, it doesn't matter personally how many times I go to the field and I see the work that we're doing. I remain so passionate about what we do and how we do it and the, the commercial approach that we take. And you know, I'm on the brand building side of it, and, but doing journeys like this really helps me to stay motivated and current and creative, which I think is the most important thing in doing the work that I do. So I don't know whether you've got any more questions. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.